Hello again, in this video I'll show you the progress that I'm making with the lion and I'll talk through topology, techniques and skills and I'll tell you where I'm at with the client and what's happening there. This is not a detailed tutorial, it's just an overview but I will be placing links to the things that I'm talking about with cards in the corner and links in the description. So I've done a tiny bit of work and uh, made the head a bit wider which was actually a suggestion of people on YouTube. Also I'm coming around to the idea that I'm going to change the eyes as well and actually have separate eyes because there is a part where the lion needs to look up and I may need to move the eyes and make them look in a direction. So apart from that just smartening up and I'm fairly happy with the model now. So I'm doing a slight cheat with the retopology. I've taken it out to instant mesh and this is what I came up with. Now with instant mesh I have guided the topology in some way and to some degree. So it wasn't just a case of simply sending it off to instant mesh and bringing it straight back in. I have told the topology that I want to be fairly straight around here, straight around here. So I use the comb tool for that. But it needs a lot of tidying up. Instant Mesh doesn't replace a good UV unwrap. And I am animating this line, so I am slightly concerned that it's not quite good enough. However, it does give me a good starting point from which to build. So I can delete some faces and then re-add some faces. Rather than building the whole thing again, I should be able to use parts that are fairly clean. What I will definitely have to do is completely redo the face because it hasn't come out particularly well. So I took that base model, I took it into 2.79 because I wanted to use the auto mirror. It was actually quicker to take it to 2.79 and use that auto mirror to get a nice mirror down the middle and then bring it back into 2.8. So it's got the mirror modifier on, it's got a subdivision surface on just so it clings to the surface a bit better and it's got the shrink wrap. The target is obviously the lion original, which is there, and this is the lion remesh. Now the shrink wrap modifier is very good, but it's not completely precise. So you may have to do some manual adjustment. What I find is useful is to actually apply the shrink wrap modifier so it sticks in all the right places, and then add another shrink wrap to it. So that sounds a bit odd, but if I hide this for now, you can see how the mesh moved to different locations. And if I reapply it, it's stuck more closely to the mesh. And I've just given it an offset so it's slightly above the surface by 0 0.01 meters, so one centimeter. So if I apply this now, I'll go into object mode to do that of course, apply that, and then re-add it. Choose the line original, and I'll just put it above the surface slightly again. Now all my topology, now all my topology will be much closer. And I do this every now and again, I apply it and then re-add it just to make sure it is nicely snapped to the surface. Also, I have snapping turned on and to face, so the points will snap to the face of the Lion original. So after that, I decided that I did need to remodel the face, so I've started that here, and I've hidden the rest of this mesh here, but I have extruded this loop ring around here so that I know it's going to match up and it's got nice topology. So I don't just start creating here and then hopefully it will match up. I've actually taken the line around here, hid the rest and then built up from there so I know that it's actually going to link to my old one. It's always good to have a loop around your head like this and then you can sort of build on the detail level. And this is the finished retopo of the face although it's not completely finished it's pretty close to being finished and I've done a very basic job with the eyes. Like I say, I'll probably cut those out. I'm just kind of testing things at the moment. So I'll probably cut those out and put some real eyes in a bit later. But generally around the nose, the face, although these faces are a little bit large, it's reasonably good and I'm reasonably happy. Well, they haven't quite finished, there's a tooth in there. <laughs> this is an earlier phase. And you can see it's relatively clean topology for the most part. I could have certainly spent longer on this and done a more detailed job. But you do have to weigh up how much time these things are going to take, and of course how much time the contract is kind of allowing and how much it's worth and the detail level they need. The other thing that's worth bearing in mind is that I don't really need to texture this in terms of any detailed painting. So the topology doesn't have to be absolutely perfect from that point of view, but I do need to animate it, so it does need to be good enough to animate. Now ideally there should be a loop going around your mouth and this is slightly out in that sense. It sort of joins up a bit too quickly over here. And like I say, this area is a bit glitchy really. So the next stage I've gone to is applying the subdivision surface modifier and the shrink wrap modifier. 
So you can see they've disappeared from here, so they're applied. Make sure you're saving your work before you're doing that sort of thing. And you can see the extra detail I've got now because of the subdivision surface modifier. But it's not too many faces. We're about 10,000, which should be absolutely fine. I still haven't decided exactly how I'm going to do the finish result, whether I'll put a subdivision surface modifier and use a displacement map, or whether I can get away with just basic normals. Generally with film you use a displacement map because you have more detail, but it does obviously increase your render times. And again it's down to the project and how much they're willing to spend on it, and how much time you can afford to be rendering and have your computer sitting there rendering. Or you can of course send it off to a render farm. But those are things I can test slightly down the line. The other point that's worth bearing in mind, I haven't tidied up much in these areas. It's still slightly poor topology, but it's not awful, it's just a bit poor. But again, I think I'm going to just about get away with this, because once again I need to move on with the contract quickly, and the budget isn't really there for me to spend a lot of time on it. You'll notice that the retopology of the face has meant that there's more detail in the face, and that's a good thing, and that will help me when there's any animation in the face. So again, not great, but it's okay. So there's the sort of basic retopo, and it's very rough. And there is part of me that wants to go overboard on this project and do something really amazing, but I do have to consider the other things I'm doing, and even though I'm just doing it as a hobby, let's say, because I'm not sure about how the contract's going to go, I still can't afford to spend too much time on it because of all my other commitments. So I am taking a few shortcuts and testing to see whether they're going to work. What I'll do next is build a test rig, and I'll bake out some textures. In terms of communication with the client, it's gone fairly quiet, I'm still waiting on the storyboard. Again, that's why I'm not rushing too much with this project, and I'm still treating it more like a hobby rather than a real job, because the realities of the contract aren't particularly clear yet. And if I was advising anybody as to whether they should be taking on this sort of contract or not, I would say definitely not. The main reason I'm doing it is to kind of show you the process of working with a client and the difficulties that you might get taking on this type of contract. But they have agreed to pay me in installments and they have agreed that a full storyboard will be needed. Of course I won't be sending them any of my finished pieces until that's been completely decided upon and I have received my first payment. So in the next session I'll show you how I've built the rig and the finished baked materials and hopefully we'll have the storyboard by then so I can give you more information about that. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps.